on, continuing that problem. You got to find the cosine of a plus b, but they gave you tangents and cosecants. How good is that? Okay. The first thing I'm going to tell you with all these identity problems, if they say find the cosine of a plus b, and you know that, oh, that's one of the identities we must study, you better go write out that identity on your paper first thing. If they want you to find the cosine of a plus b, it means somehow we've got to go find, use that identity, and we have to figure out what the cosine of angle a is, the cosine of angle B, subtract the sine of angle A times the sine of angle B. You are going to have to find out what the number values are for every one of those four trig functions and fill it in here. Yes, our answer is going to be a number. We're going to come out with a number in the end. But how on earth am I going to get cosine of angle A? The only thing I know about angle A is I know tangent is negative square root of 5 over 2. Where on earth am I going to get cosine from? What did you mean? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I to draw the little triangle thing. Remember I told you those little triangle things that a bunch of you bombed on the first test? <laughs> okay. Angle A. What quadrant is it telling you angle A is in? If this between pi over 2 and pi, yes, it's in the second quadrant. So you are going to actually have to draw yourself a picture of angle A. Okay. What do you know about angle A that you could use to get its side length? Uh, tangent is y over x. This is a lot of work. Tangent is y over x. Uh, wrong. Easy. You'll actually see discover these are the easy ones. Yes, they work, but they're pretty easy to put together. Yeah. They're going to take a while, but they're easy Correct. once you know what to do. Okay, so if I know tangent y over x, don't I know then that side y is square root of 5 and side x is 2? <coughs> and then you have to decide which one gets the negative. And why'd you say the 2 is negative? Yeah, 2 is going left. Yep. Okay, then what are you going to have to do to find the third side? You're going to do Pythagorean theorem. And so hopefully, yeah, by now you can square those in your head. I'm going to write it out, but yeah, you should be able to just square those yourself. And go, oh, 5 plus 4. That's 9, and so yes, R is 3. Do I have to worry about whether R is positive or negative? It's always positive. R is always positive. It's the radius. It's positive. So R is 3. Now, so I'll be able, since I have that picture, I can find the trig function of, that, of angle A for any trig function I want. I'll be able to fill in cosine of A and sine of A with that picture. But while we're drawing pictures, we need to draw picture B, too. So where do I draw picture B? 3 pi over 2 is at the bottom of your coordinate system. 2 pi is over here to the right, so yeah. We're fourth quadrant. Okay, we're between three pi. Pi over three pi. Um, okay. How do I get the sides? Get the cosecant of B. Okay, I know the cosecant of B is negative three. But that says cosecant R over Y. They do the same thing as like an angle one. Yeah. You have to do it in three over one. So therefore, remember you can move negatives on a fraction wherever you want. So if R is 3 and Y is 1, which one has to be negative? negative one. Well, it makes sense. One's going down. So yeah, one's got to be negative. R is always positive. And we would get to do another fun, exciting Pythagorean theorem. However, we would be really careful because this time we know the hypotenuse. So don't just do 3 squared plus 1 squared. It's going to be X squared. Yeah. So x squared, 9 minus 1 is going to be 8. Okay, now, this is something that just blows my mind. I have half the world who will leave that as square root of 8. Thank you. It is 2 square root of 2. Please break down your root. I was looking at people who don't know the square root of 8. Do you know the screen at you? I've got a 4 in me? No, it doesn't. Because numbers don't have mouths, so they can't count. Yes, now, is it a positive or a negative 2 squared root of 2? You have to ask yourself that question. 
We're going right, so it's got to be positive. If you don't draw the picture, you will miss the positives and negatives. If you don't draw the picture, drawing that picture is worth three points right there to draw that picture. Yeah, what number is this? Fifteen. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Probably eleven or twelve, depending on what you have to do to simplify the final answer. So you made six for not drawing pictures. So you made six for not drawing pictures. Yeah. Wait a minute, how do you get the extra three? Just in Pythagorean? Extra three. <laughs> I'm not sure what three we're talking about. This three up here is for angle A or this no, 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 I mean you three points. Oh, three points. Oh, a point for the quadrant and a point for the labeling the sides, a point for finding the third side. Right, but then what is, how do you get six on this? That's three, that's three. Oh, is my diagram sandwich? No. Three for this picture, three for this picture. Oh, it's a total okay. six. From Russia to the left. Okay. I get it. All right, so now, all right, oh, here. Who in? No. Do not do this. So we're going to do it? I am. Drives me crazy. My pet peeve, I go ballistic over here. Drives me nuts. Okay. People look at this and I say, find me the cosine of A in that picture. And so you all go, cosine. Oh, cosine is whatever what? <laughs> cosine is X over R. Needless to say, you still need to know six of rotten faces out of them, huh? I'm not giving that to you. So... Cosine is x over r. If I come to angle A and get x over r, I'll have what two sides? <laughs> Negative two over three. It would be side x over side r. And so I will have people write me this. Is that mathematically correct? Absolutely not. Probably not. A is an angle. Is negative two thirds an angle? Yes. Completely. Sixty. Do those two sides represent the angle? No. 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 That is the value. That is the cosine of angle A has the value of the negative two thirds. You don't write the trig function in there. The whole cosine is negative two thirds. Don't put a trig function with a number. Uh, Not right. an angle. So you know, don't write cosine. That would be incorrect. The cosine of angle A is the number negative two thirds. We uh, you'll never know how big angle A is. We'll just never have that value. We don't need to know the angle to solve the problem. That's the beauty of it. You don't have to know the size of the angle. Checking with it, you could find them. You could, yes. You could. All right, cosine of angle B. So you come to picture B, and you got to pull x over r out of that picture. Two squared two over three. Okay, that's all right. Okay, the positives and okay, the positives and negatives should be correct if you do your picture right, but there is a double check. This is a cosine in the fourth quadrant. Should it have come out positive? Yeah. yeah. So that's what you can double check it all. Sort of, kind of. <laughs> okay, so now go find me the sine of angle A. <laughs> sine of A is y over r. So y over r out of picture A is square root of 5 over 3. And y over r out of picture b, negative one third. Okay. Then, last but not least, you just have to crunch the final answer. Sometimes it'll come out to a nice number, and sometimes it will come out ugly, like this one's going to. Okay. Multiply these two. So the order of operations says we multiply first. So the two times two is going to make me have four square root of two. All over nine. Okay, back here, I'm multiplying those. Yes, you can take the negative subtraction sign times the negative, which is going to actually make it a plus square root of five over nine. Okay, it will always come out with a common denominator. If you did it right, you will have a common denominator. If you don't have a common denominator, one of your numbers is wrong. It's going to come out with a common denominator. And so then, I prefer you stick it then all over one big common denominator. Since those are not like terms on top, we can't add them. Sometimes you will be able to add them, and it'll come out a nice fraction. But in this case, it's an ugly answer. And ta-da! You have found the cosine of A plus B, and we never, ever even knew that angle was. Either angle was. It's a great thing. Yeah, but to verify? Stuff, uh, yeah. Yeah. But since you said you wanted to verify, I will be happy to provide that for oh, you. Oh, we're going to do both? You get to verify.
I would be. Why do you hate us? I don't hate you. I'm just keeping trade. What? Where? Thank you. 